Hey guys, Crypto Dad here again, and today I'm going to show you how to update the firmware on your Keystone Pro wallet to version M-10.4. So let's get started. So the Keystone Pro wallet is an air-gapped wallet. You use QR codes for verifying transactions. And so there are no cables that connect it to your computer or Bluetooth that connects to your phone. This provides a very, very small attack surface and is highly secure. And a little tricky to update the firmware since we have no cables. So I'm gonna walk you through the process of updating the firmware. I've got a link to their firmware page where you can download the firmware. And I'll also link this step-by-step -step guide for you so that you can follow along on their uh, web page as well. So the 10.4 upgrade is going to add compatibility for the core wallet. So uh, we'll go ahead and play with that once we get up and running. But it's always best practice to keep your hardware wallets upgraded uh, with the latest firmware. So what I really like about the Keystone Pro is the touch screen. It's very intuitive, very easy to use. And then they also have fingerprint on the back which is also a very cool uh, biometric security feature that makes it really easy to get into the wallet when you need to use it. As you can see here, it's about, it's uh, pretty close to a phone size, a little bit smaller than a phone, but, uh, and, but very easy to use. Other hardware wallets like the Trezor and the Ledger just don't have the screen real estate that the Keystone Pro has. So you have to decide which version of the firmware you want to use. I'm using Multicoin. They have a Bitcoin only firmware if you only want to store Bitcoin, uh, which is a little more secure for just storing Bitcoin. Uh, but in today's case, I'm going to use the Multicoin version. All right. And like I said, we're at version 10.4 here. We can go ahead and click download. They also have a verification uh, here that you can do to make sure that you've got a good copy of the firmware. We'll go ahead and click the download here. We can just drop this in our downloads folder or wherever you want to drop it on your desktop, whatever makes you happy. We'll hit save here. All right, you can open up your downloads folder and see the file right there. Now I want to do that verification step. Now what they have here is a checksum. So we can just click on there and uh, they have a little tutorial, but I can show you real quick how to verify uh, SHA-256 checksum. This is just a long number that the developers generated when they ran it on the file. And so you're just basically going to do the same thing they did and make sure we both get the same number, right? So you can copy this into your clipboard. And there are lots of ways to run a SHA-256 checksum on a file. I happen to have some standalone software that does the trick, MD5 and SHA Checksum Utility. I basically just browse to the file that I just downloaded. It's in my downloads folder. I click on that file, open it up, and then the software runs that SHA Sum check on it. It spits out uh, several numbers, but the one we want is the SHA-256. We just want to make sure that we got the same hash that the developers did on their end, and then we'll know we've got a good copy of the software. We'll just paste in that number the developers gave us and hit verify. Whoops. Okay. All right, so I ran it on the wrong file, right? I need to run it on the update zip file. So uh, we'll just go ahead and expand this. I like to use 7-zip to expand. You can use WinZip if you like. All right, you'll see there's a folder there. And I want the update.zip file, which is right here, right? That's the file I'm going to run the SHA check on. So I'll go ahead and launch my software again. We'll hit browse. And then this time we'll go to the correct file. We'll hit that, hit open. There's those uh, SHAs again. We'll paste in the one the developers gave us, hit verify, and there we go, right? So we got the correct and valid copy of the file that the developers had, right? It's just an extra check, but I like to be thorough when I do these things. So this is the file that we're going to put on a micro SD card so that we can update our firmware. 
So for the micro SD card, I've got a little reader here. It's uh, a little USB reader that has different uh, slots for cards. And I have a micro SD card here. It's really small. Goes right in here. Right, and then I can put this in my computer in a USB port. All right, just put that in the USB port. When you insert the USB device in your uh, computer and your SD card comes up, just note the drive number that it uses. Uh, we're going to format this. So uh, I'll just I can right click on it and choose format. And we want to make sure that we use the right format. We don't want NTFS, which is the default on most Windows machines. We want FAT32. So uh, make sure you choose FAT32 when you format your SD card. Go ahead and hit Start here. Click OK. All right, and after the format's over, we can close this out. All right, there's the file that we want. The drive was J right, for my system. So I'll just drag that update zip over to the SD card, copy it over, and this is what we want, right? We've got that drive J, and the only file on there is our update zip. All right, now we can close this off. All right, now we can take our USB out. Uh, we'll take our SD card out. All right, now that we've got our SD card, Let's proceed to the firmware update. All right, you might want to get a better look at my little uh, reader here. It's a USB device, and it's got several slots for SD cards. And here's our little SD card that we just updated. Has to be a micro SD card. All right, so you've got your little slot on this side, and the micro SD card will only go in one direction. Um, so if you try to push it in, and you'll you'll feel some resistance, you know it's not the right orientation. You basically want to push it all the way until it clicks. You'll hear a little snap. Then it's in. Now you can also use uh, the device to format the card. So if we tap the hamburger menu up here and go to settings, and then go to system settings, and then they have this format card here. Uh, but I'm not going to do that. I already did mine on Windows. If you go back here. All right, and you can see here that uh, the update now shows up next to my firmware version. I'm running version uh, 8.0 now. Uh, the card is in there, so I'll hit update now. You want to make sure that your battery level is higher than 70, right? Because uh, you'll need at least 70. And there's that SHA. Yeah, if you decide you want to like eyeball it again, you can uh, compare it uh, like that. But, you know, I ran my little SHA checker. So, and then make sure that you've got the recovery phrase that you wrote down when you set up your wallet. Go ahead and confirm that, and then we'll do the update now. You'll need to enter the password of your wallet confirm and you should see the update screen here all right and when it's finished it's going to reboot all right and then after you get to the uh, home screen you can uh, go back up here into settings go down here to version and you can see now that i'm running the latest version of the firmware all right so with the update of the firmware they've changed the interface a little bit uh, there used to be kind of uh, when you tapped here there was a connection wallet choice in here. Now it's down here where it says connect software wallet. We'll tap that. And then you can see the different wallets that uh, are compatible now. Notice that uh, core wallet is listed there now too. So really, it makes it really easy to just use the correct wallet that you need at any given time. Like for now, I'll show you, I can just connect to the Keystone Connection app, which basically we do on our phone. It's this app here. So if you look at the wallet that I have connected in my app in settings, you can see that uh, I've named mine Keystone 1. And if I tap these three dots, it's telling me that it's uh, firmware 8.0. So I can just go ahead and unbind here 
confirm that, and then just rebind uh, so that I make sure that I'm running the that I'm connected to the wallet the latest with the latest firmware. We'll hit bind. So on the device, you'll hit the hamburger menu here, and then we'll choose connect software wallet. And in uh, the first case, we'll just do Keystone Companion app. And then there's a little tick mark up here that you know indicates that I've already synced it up, but I just want to do a resync on the new firmware. So I'll just tap this, right? And it's going to give me this dynamic QR code. And then uh, we'll just open up the app, hit bind. We'll agree to their policies and hit confirm. That should open up the camera and we'll just scan that code with the app. And then when we go to settings, we can tap here. And now you can see that it uh, recognizes that we're bound to a device that's running the latest firmware. All right, and there we go. We'll do similar operations with uh, the different types of wallets. So for example, if we want MetaMask, uh, we'll tap MetaMask here. So for example, if you wanted to connect MetaMask, you just open up the app there and then you'll start a new wallet. And then you have this choice here, Connect Hardware Wallet. We'll just tap that. And uh, MetaMask has support for Keystone. We'll just hit Continue here. Give MetaMask access to the camera. And let it scan. And there we go. And you can enable more than one uh, Ethereum account if you want to. I'm just going to do one. And then uh, we'll choose Unlock. And there you go. You see I've got a second wallet there that I can use with Keystone. And when you use this wallet and make trades and transfers, you'll uh, have to scan the QR codes in order to verify transactions, right? It's the way the hardware wallet works. Right, and so if you wanted to use uh, Core, right? Pretty much the same thing. All right, just to give you a quick walkthrough of connecting your Keystone Pro hardware device to the Core Wallet. Uh, I've got the Core Wallet extension here. We'll just add that to Chrome. Go ahead and add the extension. All right, and uh, when the extension launches for the first time, you can create a standalone wallet if you want to, but we'd like to access an existing wallet. We can use the recovery phrase, the ledger device, or uh, as you can see here, they've got the keystone. So we just click there. It's going to walk us through that process that I just showed you, which is uh, opening up the hardware device, going to my assets, connect software, and then juice. Then we chose the core wallet and we generated that QR code. So we got that ready to go. So we'll hit scan QR code. All right, you'll see it opens up the camera. We just need to hold this up here. Now, it does say that it's going to be blurry, but that doesn't affect the scanning. Just hold it up there. Give it a minute or so. Once it makes the connection here, it'll list the addresses. We'll go ahead and tap Next. And then I agree. And we'll give the wallet a name. I'd like to call it Keystone Pro. So I'll remember. Create a password. All right, and then once we're done, we can uh, pull down the uh, extension. And you can see there's our wallet. And uh, there's a matching balance. I put a little Ethereum in there just to confirm that it did, in fact, connect to the same wallet, which it did. Uh, notice here that you can use the Avalanche chain, uh, the Ethereum chain, and even Bitcoin in the core wallet in conjunction with your Keystone. So any transactions or trades or transfers that you make in the core wallet will need to be confirmed on the device. So uh, it will act as the uh, private key. So pretty cool. Uh, they just added this uh, compatibility with the core wallet and uh, worked out pretty well for me. So there you have it. I showed you how to update the firmware on your Keystone Pro hardware device to version 10.4 and uh, showed you how to connect it to a couple of wallets. That should get you started. If you have any questions about anything I did, please throw them up in the comments and I'll do my best to get them answered.
If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you'd like to subscribe to my channel, I would appreciate it. When you subscribe, there's a little bell that you can click that will allow you to be alerted whenever I post new content. Once again, thanks for joining me and hope to see you again soon.